Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing well. Today's episode is really special. Why? Because today we are going to get a detailed introduction about sustainability. Yes, sustainability. Probably the most misused word of this century. Today our guest is I don't know mm, Um, should i call her a guest or not because she is an important part of handloom foundation our organization she is guiding us to promote sustainability her name is sonia punjabi one of the very few sustainability expert under the sun who had prominent academic and industrial achievement if you want to know about her please visit her linkedin profile i place the link in link in below so let's don't waste time by listening to me listen to her it's a interview of her listen to her till end to get a fair idea about what sustainability is and what should be the sustainability and who are not sustainable hello sonia thanks Hi, for your hello. time thanks for your time hmm. so we are delighted to get you here and i will represent um, the a major number of audience to learn from you today So let's start our topic. Sonia, let me ask you a very simple question. What is sustainability? Sure. Um and just to start out, um sustainability has a very specific definition. Um and there's many multiple definitions around what sustainability means. But just to give a very simple idea around what sustainability truly means, um sustainability is something that improves not only the quality of human lives it helps protect our ecosystems and most importantly it's something that preserves our natural resources for future generations to come um uh, also sustainability is not just you know you do this one thing and call yourself sustainable sustainability is really a holistic approach it's something and maybe just to describe that concept or make it easier for people to understand um uh, think of sustainability like a house you cannot just you know put a window sill and call it a house a house needs a solid foundation and it's made up of many different components so sustainability is truly at a house it needs a very solid foundation and there are multiple components and just to add to that at a high level the three main components of sustainability or the pillars are economic environmental and social so this is really sustainability you know it's dependent on social economic and environmental factors and that's why i said sustainability you know many people when they talk about sustainable or sustainability um there is a a very big misunderstanding um in the market and also in the community and what people think of it it's oh let me just do this one thing uh, let me as an example um if i'm a brand let me just go ahead and start with recycled packaging and i can call my brand a sustainable brand that is absolutely untrue there is you know again as i explained it is a holistic approach it's not just one thing um and also you know sustainability is when humans and nature can both exist in productive harmony and i think you know again the key thing to highlight here is productive harmony it's not just harmony it's not an exploitation um you cannot exploit nature for your own monetary purposes for your own greed uh, for you know a lot of the host of things it is when they can live in harmony uh, and also just on the flip side it is not sustainable if it's not good both for the planet and for the people 
So again, you know, it's, it has to be beneficial and it has to be a positive impact for both the people and the planet, not just the people. Um, and I would say, you know, I would just wrap up this, the concept around sustainability with, uh, again, maybe just a little bit more detail so people can grasp the idea. Sustainability, if you think of it, you can think of sustainability in terms of six R's. And these six R's are recycle, reuse, repurpose, repair, rot, and reduce. So it's not, you know, again, it's not just about recycle. All of these are very different. You know, if you can't recycle, maybe you can repair, you know, since you're talking about textiles and handloom, maybe you can repair and give a longer life. Maybe if it was a certain product, you can repurpose it and it becomes into something new. Um, maybe, you know, the other thing is rot is you can use materials that are biodegradable and compostable. And that's what you mean by rot, not polyester, uh, not plastics that are rampant in the market in the fashion industry these days because they take decades or centuries to even you know uh, get broken down in nature. So I would you know just wrap up by saying this is this is what sustainability and here's what it not what it's not. And sadly this is a very very misused term. Um, you know most people use sustainability in a way that it just sounds cool for their businesses or for themselves, or it's something that is considered as trendy, uh, it's not. So, you know, there is a huge, huge misconception and misunderstanding around what sustainability is. Okay, Sonia, we'll come later to the important point, how mm -hmm. the term sustainability become just a marketing tool or sure. a very convenient misusable term a jargon right mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. primarily let us understand a few things so far i know about you you are one of the very few sustainability expert under the sun who who explored sustainability ac academically and industrially both mm -hmm. and as you know sonia our sole interest in this platform is indian handloom Sure. So Sonia, yeah. as a sustainability expert, please, you, you have a strong bias about Indian handloom, I know that. So, <laughs> so please don't put that in, into this no. conversation. No. Mm -hmm. Be a neutral sustainability expert and please tell your view about mm -hmm. the potential of being sustainable mm -hmm. as, as a potential or sustainable alternative of textile, world textile. Right. When you see Indian handloom. Sure. Uh, and, you know, just, just for people to understand and give them the perspective, um, and Debal, you already brought that up, but I just want to also highlight, you know, I've been working in the field of sustainability and green buildings uh, way back when people didn't even understand what green buildings meant. Um, so, you know, I've kind of, I've worked with not only clients and customers across the globe, I've been responsible for um, the technical strategies and really I would say market transformation efforts globally. Uh, and, you know, I just wanted to bring that out because, you know, again, I think I've seen, I've observed a lot of people call themselves so-called sustainability mm -hmm. thought leaders or sustainability gurus. Uh, so I just wanted to put it out there uh, in case people start thinking, oh, maybe she's just one of those. Uh, uh, so just just setting the stage for everyone. Uh, I've you know led international and national efforts and worked with I would say technical research labs in the U.S. Directed their work and also authored um, many technical papers in the same field. So again, just setting the stage so people get this. Um, and to come to your question, Dable, uh, so again, focusing on textiles and more specifically Indian handlooms, uh, again, just bringing out the facts, no biases. This is just stating some of the facts and you know what's existing out there. There are a lot of different standards or certifications, you know, there are some are applicable for textiles, some are applicable more broadly for sustainability. Uh, so if we can just pick for a moment UN SDGs, 
and SDGs is really uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, there are about 17 different goals that are recognized or put forward by the UN as sustainable goals. And one of them specifically, you know, it, not that these 17 don't apply to the handlooms. I think, you know, almost all the 17 definitely apply to the handloom sector. Uh, but there is one goal specifically, which is responsible consumption and production. And I think that is, you know, front center top priority for handlooms. Um, and whether this applies, you know, whether this criteria applies to handlooms and how, so, you know, let's maybe dive in a little deeper. Uh, and again, just as a context uh, for people to understand, textile production is a major contributor to the environmental pollution because of the associated greenhouse gas emissions and contamination from almost all the processes, right? From, you know, growing it to production. Um, contamination of both our air and fresh water supplies. So I just want to put it out there, you know, textile production, uh, not too many people talk about it, you know, they talk about many different sectors, but there's also, you know, a lot of data that shows that the carbon emissions just by textile production, uh, they amount to about eight to 10% of the global carbon emissions, which is much more than aviation and shipping combined. So, you know, everybody talks about, oh, you know, there's a large carbon footprint associated with when you travel or when you take an airline. Uh, so again, just to put things in perspective, the textile production is much more than aviation and shipping combined. So you can imagine, you know, the magnitude or uh, negative impact. Um, and, you know, also, you know, just <laughs> as a, a process, you know, uh, the, the supply chain, and again, you know, just for simplicity, um, the fashion supply chain, it starts from usually design, you know, there's uh, the production of the materials, uh, then is actually the producing of your clothes, leading to distribution and then retail or wholesale. Uh, and then that's where it reaches the customers. And typically after that, when it reaches the customers, uh, it's, you know, your regular use, laundering. And after you're done with the use, it typically goes in a landfill. It's dumped. Right. So this is just a linear. So I'm just, you know, explaining for everyone that this is a very linear supply chain. It starts from design and it ends in trash. Right. And in order for a supply chain and in order for I would also say in order for the handloom industry or handlooms to start meeting the sustainability criteria, there really needs to be a circular supply chain. It cannot just start with you know, the same linear approach. It needs to be where when you're done with using the clothes, when their use is completed, you remember I just mentioned the six R's earlier, there needs to be another loop built in there. Maybe it's recycled because, you know, it's done and it's ended with this life and maybe the clothes can be recycled. And also, you know, I think the textile industry, it's considered that, for the vast majority, most of the textiles can be recycled or re reusable, but they're not. This is one of the, you know, the rare industries where uh, recycling and repurposing is very, very negligible, but the potential is much more. Uh, so this is the circularity, you know, you can either recycle them or you could repurpose them. You know, for example, if it was, you know, an old sari, I'm just kind of you know, giving examples for people to start thinking. Um, you could convert it into something else that is more of a utility function. So, you know, you repurpose what was something before or you reuse it or, you know, if possible, you can repair it. Um, so this is the idea. So in order for any handloom to really meet this sustainability criteria, it doesn't matter if it's the UN SDGs or any other criteria, it's not that one thing. Oh, let me just do the packaging. Uh, or let me just do this one thing yeah. as an example, um, just because you're using or selling a handloom cotton dress, you, it's not sustainable. Neither as a brand can you call it a sustainable brand or if you wear handloom clothes, you can't call that a sustainable. And again, just to, again, I think there's a lot of perspective here that's lacking in the, you know, the common, common people's mind. Uh, just to also put it out there, since we are talking, since I mentioned the example of cotton, 
Uh, cotton happens to be one of the most environmentally demanding crops out there. So just by that, in a sense, it's not a sustainable. You cannot technically just call it sustainable. Uh, so again, you know, just to just to highlight, all natural materials are not necessarily sustainable. It's this whole process, you know, as I explained, um, how you procure them, how you source them, uh, what dyes were used, you know, what contamination, what were the processes, it's the entire supply chain. And as I, you know, kind of, again, to emphasize, there needs to be a circular supply chain. And what circular supply chains really do is they convert waste into opportunity. Um, and maybe just one more, you know, going uh, going to the high level criteria of, you know, can this be, can handlooms be meeting the sustainability criteria? Um, for a long time now, I would say, you know, for the past several years, a lot of production of clothes has moved on to Asia. Um, one, you know, one of the main reasons being that it's cheap labor. When we talk about sustainability, uh, a lot of the brands out there, they boast about, you know, oh, we provide minimum wage. Again, to break the myth out here for a lot of people, minimum wage is very different from living wage or what we call fair wages. And that's one of the criteria of sustainability. A living wage or a fair wage is something that provides for the health, the education, um, all of the basic needs, you know, provides them food. So, you know, let's say pick a weaver, you know, it, it would provide for all of these things for that weaver. And I personally have yet to come across a weaver because I've had numerous conversations with, you know, weavers and artisans alike. I have yet to come across a weaver that has all of these basic necessities. These are luxuries for them. So, you know, again, so all of these brands that talk about minimum wage, that is an absolute BS strategy. It is a living wage that is what is necessary to meet the criteria of no poverty. That's another, you know, that's one of the UN SDGs. Um, to meet no poverty, to have food at the table, you know, that's a basic necessity. Um, and also there's, you know, a lot of these, uh, I would say brands, small businesses and large alike, um, they have a lot of these, uh, 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 I'm trying to figure out a word um, so it doesn't sound very, um, let's say very, very evil. Uh, it's, they use these, you know, very stupid or, you know, uh, trying to play with the customer's mindset tactics around, oh, we are helping weavers. We are helping the handloom industry. That is absolute BS. If a weaver, just think in your mind, you know, I think these are questions that people rather than listening, this is also questions you should have in your mind when you're trying to do something about sustainability, you know, at an individual level. How is this helping a weaver when they cannot even have any of these basic necessities or a living wage? So everything is pocketed in these brands, but nothing really goes to the weaver. Is this exploitation? Or is this really giving them a living wage? So I think, you know, just some of these questions need to be more front and center for a lot of the customers so they can start thinking about these things and ask the brands. Uh, so again, you know, I think sustainability is so misused. It just sounds super cool. It just sounds like, oh, I'm, you know, sustainable brand. Um, so just to kind of wrap up, you know, your, the question around criteria for sustainability in Indian handlooms. Yes, you know, Surely they can, uh, and just to add, some of the handlooms, maybe depending on again what processes they've gone through, you know what the crop is, what the dyeing process was, because it's you know the dyeing processes, the chemicals used, they are a large, large pollutant for air and waterways. So it, you know, yes, some can. Okay, Sonia, we got some light on this question. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a I have a comment to make on your point. Sure. Primarily, yes, my observation, and I may not be as learned as you in sustainability <laughs> field, but I have some bit of idea about handloom. No one can help handloom sector or waivers. 
either you can be so grounded that you are one of them or mm -hmm. you are a client to them you cannot mm -hmm. help them client never help the service provider right client mm -hmm. pay the wages or the fees and get their services or the product right absolutely mm -hmm. so and secondly the minimum wage that's a that's a that, that's a joke according oh. to me because there yeah. are many international certification is there as you know i don't mm -hmm. want to name those who mm -hmm. are giving certification to a business being fair just by paying minimum wages minimum wages yeah. means having rice in the plate every day that's it yeah they don't care that their children getting correct education or not they don't care that that person have medical insurance or not etc etc et no yeah mm -hmm. very true so the thing is according so far my observation is concerned the international audit system there are many certification system also they are not at all sensitive towards the real need of sustainability man popularly the sustainability is <coughs> about a word in in bit deeper manner it is about the sustainable development goal of uno right so mm -hmm. i cannot in, in a layman's eye i cannot see that, that is happening within 2030 what which, which is supposed to be the targeted date very true and very true it become a joke in a in a in a greater way number one number mm -hmm. two okay yes cotton is a is not a environment friendly crop but thankfully india always have an answer about that that mm -hmm. is generic mm -hmm. cotton there are many <laughs> cotton species in india which can be only rent fed okay and they are yeah. as good as any other hybrid cotton Sure. Yeah. The point is, there are people, okay, who are saying that okay, cotton is water demanding crop, so viscose is sustainable, which is absolutely <laughs> not okay. Yeah, so yeah. They, mm -hmm. Probably because of economics, probably because to fulfill the need of fast fashion market, they are doing that. Mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. the problem is in. mass psyche okay look in a mass scale they don't have access to people like you every time right mm -hmm. so they only have access to popular media like newspapers news channel etc etc sure sure and the yeah, majorly yeah. the digital arena influencers like bloggers and loose talkers <laughs> and blah 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 so oh yeah don't even get me started on that <laughs> don't you think sonia that it, this is making up long term really long term damage to people's psyche where we cannot understand our own good by understanding the sustainability i couldn't agree more them all uh, and you know it's 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 very complex on this one hand we talk about sustainability we talk about let's do things to you know save our planet and on the other flip side mm. there is and i can say this out so i think there is brands like shein which i think everybody's heard about and let's just think about tiktok for a moment if we just talk about these two things it almost seems like you, they're definitely playing with the minds of people you know as you pointed out you know it, there is lots of playing around with you know the psyche of the masses they are playing with minds of people and it's almost come to a point where it seems like they keep producing more and more cheap clothes or cheaper clothes um where the intent of the clothes is just for that one tiktok moment that's it it's just for that one tiktok moment you know as far as quality as far as how long they last <laughs> as far as how much plastics they have as far as how much polluting they are answer is yes to all of that it's pretty much they are extremely polluting uh you know polyester obviously i think most people if they don't know it is a kind of plastic and more than half of our clothes today have plastics um we talk about let's recycle plastics do you do you ever think about 
my clothes have plastics. I'm walking around in pretty much plastic. Do I recycle that? Do I not wear those plastics? Um, no, people don't even think of that. You know, a lot of these virgin plastics, you know, more than half of our clothes, again, they are made from virgin plastics. It's not recycled plastic, right? So all of these virgin plastics or polyester, uh, they shed microfibers and microfibers pollute our air and our water for centuries. It's just going to be polluted. So what these brands and, you know, the whole TikTok generation, um, and also I think a lot of the harm has been caused by the influencer culture, uh, where you see somebody, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter. I wear this, you know, outfit for like one day and I throw it out. Uh, Cause no, you can't wear the same thing again, or I'm wearing plastics. Uh, so you, you, you pointed it out, you know, I think they are so on the flip side here, we talk about UN goals, sustainability, and here we are going in the exact opposite direction. Um, it was fast fashion, you know, fast fashion is a concept that's been around for a long time. It's no longer fast fashion. It has come to a point where, you know, brands like these have converted this to ultra fast fashion, where you just wear your clothes for a very, very short time, maybe a day or maybe, you know, a couple of times and that's it. It goes in a landfill. Uh, do people even know what happens there? Clothes just stay there for decades. And this is the part where, you know, people need to start questioning, thinking. And so, you know, again, this is not something that a lot of the, you know, the general public don't know these things, but this is not the... This is not an era of innocence, right? All information is really available if you seek it. So unless a consumer or a customer wants to seek it, no one can really help them out. You know, everything exists. So this is again, um, innocence is out the door. You need to be well informed. And this whole idea of somebody else will save the environment or somebody else will do this, that is, I think one of the biggest harmful things when we talk about sustainability and saving the planet, nobody else is going to do it. Everything starts at an individual scale. Yes, companies, corporations, all of these people need to do their own parts, but you as an individual can start and take some baby steps. Uh, and if we don't, we're never going to meet all these, you know, these large goals around uh, reducing carbon emissions at the global, let alone, you know, even national scales. Um, and even this influencer culture and, you know, all of this stuff, you know, going from fast fashion to ultra fast fashion, you know, again, this is my personal thinking around that is people are no longer really shopping for clothes. And this is most part, I'm not generalizing. I don't think everybody's like that. Um, but uh, people are no longer shopping for clothes. They're shopping for content. So yeah, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more with what you just said. And I think this is, this, you know, I'll stay off the topic of this because I think we can have a larger conversation around how bad all of this, you know, the social media and all of the culture has really been towards fashion. Um, but it's something that we need to address because it is a large part of the overall, you know, meeting our goals. Okay, Sonia, I got your point about influencers and uh, environment made by influencers and the new culture happened uh, where fast fashion became super fast fashion or ultrasonic <laughs> fashion or supersonic fashion, whatever, rocket fashion whatever yeah, yeah. it is uh -huh. the thing is let me give you an uh, uh, environment what what you also know and after that ask you the question just imagine in this pandemic area in the last two or two and a half years almost there are thousands of artisans who left their craft yeah. Thousands of artisans who haven't get, um, who, who was there, who are probably right now, um, this is midnight in India, right mm -hmm. now sleeping with an empty stomach. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But still, mm -hmm. still, some brands are shouting out their sustainability 
Mm-hmm. Some people mm-hmm. may be or may not be. Maybe they are believing or may not be, but buying from them. And end of the day, the thing is, it became a label culture. Okay. Yeah. Ultimately, the label sells. Ultimately, there are designers or what your you know who don't even know an artisan but sell mm-hmm. handcraft mm-hmm. in skyrocketing price without fulfilling any moral responsibility. Forget about sustainability. Okay. Sure. Sustainability yeah. is always a second part. Primary yeah. moral responsibility. <laughs> so I am not here to talk about them. I'm not about uh, at all interested about them. Let me ask you a question. Is sustainable, responsible consumption is also a holistic approach, right? So mm-hmm. sustainability and this planet where we all are living, it's nobody's father's property. So the effort should be holistic across the society, across the board. Without a doubt. But the problem is we are looking for an avenger of Marvel comics who will come like Iron Man <laughs> and do something. Okay. Hmm. Probably a superhero we are waiting for. And we are enjoying the circus of sustainability. So, end of the day, if the planet won't exist, there won't be any economy or market or fast fashion, slow fashion, no fashion. Okay. Yep. So, mm-hmm. to, in fact, to practice your fashion, to enjoy your fashion, the planet should exist, for, at least for the next generations, right? Mm-hmm. So the mentality is ultimately in longer term a suicidal mentality. And we all are trying to commit a suicide and expecting some Marvel Comics Avenger will come and they will save us. Yeah. Don't you think it is insane? It is not, the question is not about the sustainability or technical part of sustainability, but as an observer, to have decent and deep idea about sustainability so shouldn't you think that the sustainable frameworks like sustainable development goals of um, UNO should be, in, should be included in kids text in schools or syllabus mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. like that because we are so we become so insane just because of not, it's not about awareness. It, do you think there needs to be a sustainability education from childhood? Without a doubt. And you know, if um, a couple, actually, you know, a couple of things come to mind and I'm going to share that. The first thing they all, when you were describing what is this day and you know, the suicidal, mentality or you know if the planet doesn't exist what's the point of talking all these you know big talks um the first thing that comes to my mind is uh sadly a lot of our human mind works around and you know a a very i think a very famous quote comes to mind we never know the value of water until the well is dry and you know sadly this is something that applies to a lot of what's happening around sustainability and not just sustainability, I would say, you know, saving the planet. Uh, I remember hearing about this or hearing about recycling for a long, long, long time now, right? It's not a new concept, but is this something that's still very commonplace? Everybody does it? No. Um, So tying this back to, you know, your question around, does this need to be part of education for children? Without a doubt. Speaking about, you know, things that have been happening in the U.S. for a long time, because, you know, I, I've been working here in this country uh, and here, um, there definitely has been some level of mind shift and these kinds of concepts and, you know, uh, children are taught the importance of very simple things, you know, again, let's just pick on recycling or pick on, you know, you can, you know, let's not waste food. So take food only as much as you can eat. So a lot of kids curriculum here, uh, still it's not very common, but I have been hearing at least in the past couple of years that kids are 
taught some sustainable co concepts and more concepts around how do you save the environment and the planet uh, from the beginning. And this is something, market transformation, community transformation is a long process. It is not a flip of the switch. You cannot just turn it on and off. These things take a long time because this is all about how you think <laughs> is how you behave and behavioral you know, aspects about how humans behave and you know, their consuming habits. This is not something you can just do tomorrow for most people. You know, again, it's not a flip of the switch. It is a process. So I would say that like absolutely meaningful market transformation needs to happen. And, you know, again, just giving an example of how this happened with green buildings, you know, way back when I started working on this, uh, as I mentioned, people hadn't heard about what this green buildings is, you know, how do you make a building environmentally sustainable? Uh, do I just, honestly, I've, ha I've had people in those days ask me, oh, do I just need to put a recycling bin? Or really, what is green building? Is it really green? Like, this is the level of where it was versus where it is now. This is, you know, this is starting, this is like 2005 and like early 2000. So it has taken a long time for the market to shift where this is now, I would say it's a globally recognized trading system uh, and people understand what green buildings mean in my industry. Uh, so it's a long shift. Uh, yes, absolutely children need to be taught about this. So this is a lot about education and awareness, not just awareness. Um, and on the other side, um, it's become so commonplace, more and more brands, small, small businesses, you know, large brands, designers are calling themselves sustainable. It really is a joke. It's a joke and it's very unfortunate um, because most of the customers fall for these stupid tactics. And what is really missing, you know, the vast majority of these brands, um, they are nowhere close to being sustainable. And I'm going to state some facts to this. It's not just, you know, somebody coming out there and just saying this. Um, this is, again, fact-based. It's based on research that's out there. Again, if you seek more information, you can go find it. Um, uh, there is a very recent study uh, in July of 2021. There is a nonprofit. Um, uh, called Changing Markets Foundation. And they actually came up with a detailed research and study that highlighted that about 59% of all the green claims made by UK and Europe fashion brands. So again, highlight UK and Europe which is, you know, they tend to be much more stringent about sustainability, you know, they have uh, much more bigger goals, uh, they're more aggressive. So let me just say that, right? If these, if these regions, um, so they are misleading, let me just finish that, you know, these green claims by the UK and Europe brands, fashion brands, are misleading and could be greenwashing. And again, just to, you know, give the concept out there for people to understand greenwashing, uh, brands are greenwashing when they make misleading or false claims about how much more environmentally friendly they are than they really are, right? Uh, sometimes this is downright deception and it's you know pretty commonplace. They're just deceiving people when they say they are sustainable. Many a times it's overly ambitious claims and absolutely no transparency or accountability. And sustainability is about accountability. You need to have a tracking mechanism in place and you need to be accountable. You can't just say, and I'm gonna, you know, maybe uh, dial it down a little bit just so everyone can understand, you know, sometimes examples and perspective is important. So let me just give you an example. You know, most of these brands, again, they focus on very impressive sounding initiatives with absolutely no tracking, no accountability. And here are some examples. Uh, you can't just put plants in an office or stick on PVs on your roof. Um, or uh, as a brand, you can't just have recycled or you know eco-friendly packaging and call yourself sustainable. Again, bullshit. I don't have a better word for that, but this is bullshit. Um, while this is a good baby step, you know, it's good to have 
biodegradable or you know compostable or recycled packaging it's good to have plants in your office it's good to have pvs on your roof so you have renewable energy um but if you are not doing anything as a brand or a company to make changes in your entire supply chain these little steps have very 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 little impact on sustainability on the environment um and you know this strategy of you know i i've seen a lot of indian brands especially they talk about how they use recycled packaging and they call themselves sustainable brand uh this is a very peripheral strategy it's just like scratching the surface of sustainability if i can say that it is not sustainability it is not sustainable what about the products what about wages you know we spoke of you know i earlier spoke about wages i spoke of you know we spoke about poverty we spoke about food on the table we spoke about plastics in your clothes dyes chemicals you know pollutants the list goes on and you know again not to make this overly complex uh, but it is more than this one thing it is a bunch of different things that needs to be done so again you know i think uh, whole bunch of things come to my mind but absolutely there needs to be a consumer mind shift unless consumers start demanding and asking questions and seeking answers um a lot of this is not going to change brands you know brands that i mentioned earlier uh, they are going to keep i would say you know uh, working on the minds of people and consumerism and where we need to head towards if we really want to save our planets and uh, keep our waters um, mm-hmm. where they're drinkable for us for a long time uh, and we don't get to a point where the water is so polluted that we can't use it as potable water or our natural resources are depleted to the point where we have nothing left for future generations uh, it needs to go from consumerism to if i can say minimalism you know and the the sole concept of fast fashion ultra fast fashion it's the opposite side of the spectrum it doesn't it's not minimalism so minimalism in many ways you know it's minimalism in terms of our usage as a consumer you know maybe i could buy fewer clothes uh, minimalism also in terms of the process you know the process intensive because textile industry is very process intensive so you know minimalism in terms of the actual process where it's not so intensive uh that it's using fewer you know, fewer or no chemicals uh so that's the concept okay so mm-hmm. in that note um, <laughs> just just one point one yes information came into my mind sure uh, just imagine gender equity that's an important part of sustainability right mm. yeah yeah so not only food in the plate not only proper wages not only environment but gender okay um, sure absolutely the cultural part of any society is also a part of can part of concern in mm-hmm. when when you talk about sustainability so i know few organizations where there there is hardly any lady got employment employment in any possible way okay Now, i'm not talking about the conventional manner of employment any possible way but sure. they got fair business certification from international agencies so sonia <laughs> don't you think that gender equity i don't know why and i'm not talking about india okay in india gender equity is in challenge that's true it's a it's a unequal society especially in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but when i talk when i think about a so called better worlds agency who used to conduct mm-hmm. audit <coughs> but they give a they, 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 they don't bother they, they don't underline a point that these organization don't don't have a, a, a single a single woman employee come on but you you what kind of company yeah, yeah. you are running where a, you don't have a single 
woman employee. What kind of company you are running? It's not possible under the sun, right? When, in especially India, okay, but there are a handsome number of women who are studying well, who are, mm -hmm. who, are, who, are, who, are who are getting empowered by themselves, okay? I don't, I mm -hmm. don't subscribe to the um, concept of woman empowerment. Nobody can empower no, anybody. Everybody empowers himself or herself. But the problem is gender equity is not even at the point of audit agencies of better world, so-called better world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So where we are going? Are still women the subjectified, objectified? Or they are not capable enough in our mindset? What is happening? What's the problem? Mm -hmm. So let's see. This is a a very profound question. Uh, in this, again, in this day and age, uh, I again understand, you know, uh, Europe and the US are, and let me see how to put this, are slightly or, you know, are different than India in terms of gender equity. Uh, and, you know, given the last few years here specifically, uh, there has been a lot, lot more emphasis on not just, you know, gender equity or gender equality, but I would say more on diversity. Uh, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, you know, again, you know, I, if I can, again, take this back of, you know, a few years ago, um, when I started in this field, I was one of the, if I can say, very, 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 you know, it was impossible, not impossible, but it was really, really hard to find a person of color uh, who was, you know, a younger and woman uh, to be doing what I was doing. It was, you know, it was a field that was dominated by white Caucasians. Um, and I, it was, it was, it was undoubtedly a challenge, a challenge where I learned a lot, uh, sometimes hard, uh, but that has changed. That has changed, you know, I can, I can say that as of today um, or in the past couple of years, there is definitely a lot more women and women from, you know, diverse ethnic backgrounds uh, in fields like mine that are considered to be, you know, more male dominated because this is, this is uh, um, I worked as a visiting researcher and, you know, there were barely, barely any uh, back in the day. Uh, so that has, again, shifted. And I can't even imagine, you know, the thing you were talking about, I forget the, you mentioned like a system, right? I forget the, but what was the thing that you mentioned right now? Like the name of an agency. Okay, um, forget the name of an agency, but I can't I'm even talking about the general framework. Sure, sure. Yes. So I can't even imagine not having gender equity or having women play an equal or not play an equal. I think recognizing that women play an equal role in all of these fields to even exist. Because let me just again, you know, the one thing that was something that I learned later, you know, I learned in several years of observing and, you know, mm. kind of speaking with weavers, a lot of the weavers, a lot of the people who are spinning the yarn, doing all kinds of things in handlooms are women in India. Um, but, well, let me interject in this point. Sure, you sure, sure. You cannot yeah. imagine Indian handloom without women. Absolutely. So it, it's not possible, Absolutely. number one. Number yeah. two, mm -hmm. generally, okay, waving is the last part of the handloom, right? There is much more before that, yes, yes. Much more before that and much, much what, are the, what are the, what are the pre-waving process? All are women dominated. Women. So, yes. my, uh, so this, was, this me, was something new let for me. Let me elaborate this. my question mm -hmm. in this manner. Mm -hmm. That's some so-called Indian sustainable brands <laughs> are saying that we empower women. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah, so yeah. I don't see any space to empower women in <laughs> um, Indian handloom because with, without, without, without ladies involvement, you cannot do anything. So. No, no. There is no space to empower them. They are already empowered, okay? They are empowered by their own power, number one. So this is a point of advertisement 
number one that mm -hmm. we are empowering. Oh, sure, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh -huh. On the other case, agencies where there is no countable woman employment in an organization, they get, they are getting certification with there are number of certification which can prove you are sustainable right nowadays okay mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. are yeah. xyz there are. xyz certificate if you have xyz certification then you are sustainable right then sure. xyz yeah, yeah. none of them have <laughs> the point of gender equity in their framework so the thing is when you are you are basically you are running up hr policy okay so mm -hmm. efficiency is the efficiency is the primary factor right not the gender yeah. yeah and and obviously you must you must check i iq or intelligence or blah 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 but there are many other things when there is no woman employment in one section then mm -hmm. there some there will be something abnormal number one Number two, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you are ab advertising that there is woman empowerment, that is also abnormal. What is there to advertise? Yeah. Women mm -hmm. got employment. There is nothing to advertise, right? Sonia, I believe you You are a lady and you became sustainability expert. Not Your gender have nothing to do with it, right? No, it doesn't. So, mm -hmm. so just imagine somebody is advertising okay sonia a lady sustainability <laughs> expert that's a bullshit number one number two if in your sector if there is no woman right mm -hmm. that is another mm -hmm. abnormality and both the abnormality coexisting right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so my i'm elaborating my question so are we still there to think I, I'm talking about general society across the board. Are we, are we reached there where we can think gender neutrally? Our thought process can be gender neutral. Are we still sure. there? Or it's a long way to go? Uh, sadly, I think there's a long way to go. And again, if we talk about India, mm -hmm. uh, and not just India, if you know, a lot more developing countries. Mm -hmm. um, and if I can specifically, specify uh, its economic independence mm. Mm. that is what you know empowerment mm. I, I, would, I don't want to go there but more practically it is the economic independence or women to be uh, in a point where they are equal with their male counterpart and have the economic independence so I think mm. you know sadly it's a long way to go uh, so not gender neutral just yet um, and I, you know, again, so your question, Debal, around uh, gender, um, I do think if claims are made or if somebody says that they are empowering, you know, X number of women through their work, as long as that is not just a false or again, you know, cool sounding statement, as long as that is something that has more facts to it. They are transparent around what they have done, what they mean by empowering women. Uh, I definitely, you know, would be in favor of that. And I certainly think that is needed. Again, just thinking of how India is culturally, uh, women and more so women in rural sector, uh, they need to be more economically independent. So having having you know women empowerment or more transparency around that is really important but again you just can't say oh you know we we empowered women what does that mean there needs to be some facts there needs to be what does that mean and that's missing okay so mm -hmm. we came down to the last part of the session mm -hmm. um, last question to you sonia Yes. So the thing is, end of the day, we get to understand from you, mm -hmm. whenever we talk about a discomfort in our society, end mm -hmm. of the day, that is related to sustainability, right? Whatever discomfort, 
a discomfort which can bother millions of people, any kind of gender inequality, racism, economics, hunger, education, medical benefits, climate, it all can bother millions of people. And whatever is there which can bother millions of people are under the framework of sustainability. We have to think about that if we want to stay sustainable, right? Mm -hmm. So the thing is ultimately, you talked about sustainability education from childhood. You talked about that consumers and general people should be more aware to save this world because no superhero will come. But the problem is the short-term goal of sustainability is when sustainability become a business. So there should be more effort from people like you to, to stand and say, okay, what is wrong and what is right? Other than mm -hmm. very few like you don't even stay active. They're just doing a job. Sustain I don't think su teaching sustainability expert, doctor is not just a job. Mm -hmm. they're, mm -hmm. they are basically the society builder. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So you 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 are a sustainability expert. That's not your only your professional quality. So why? Other than very few like you, don't even don't even talk about it beyond their office. Why? Ah, let's see. So I hope um, you can relate to the question. Hmm. Oh, I sure can. I sure can. I have why, a lot to say. For, for for many people, why this is just a job. It cannot be just a job. Doctor can well, medical profession cannot be just a job. Teaching cannot it be cannot. just a job. So it's a way of life. It's a way of life. Be, it's not. Yes. It, it cannot be just a job. But where, mm -hmm. other than very few like you, don't even talk about it beyond their office. Why? Let's see. So I will again, rather than take a very broad sweep generalization, um, I'm going to, let's just say, let's focus on handloom, fashion, textiles at India. Uh, and, you know, that arena and sustainability in that arena. Uh, I have been observing, not just observing, I've had many, many interactions with all kinds of you know, people, direct artisans, weavers, entities, uh, to really have a deep dive understanding around what's happening, you know, what the problems are, uh, and not just you know, speak without any, because, you know, it, having a background where I've been a technical researcher, that's how you really approach innovative solutions or creative solutions for a problem. You, you just don't come out there and say, let's just do it this way. Uh, there is some reasoning behind why you do things, right? Um, so to answer your question around why not too many people talk about this, um, I have noticed so many, and again, I, if I can say not, let, let me flip that. I have yet to come across one Indian brand or business that is truly sustainable. There's many, 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 many that I have seen that, you know, left, right, center, talk all this bullshit around, oh, I'm a sustainable brand or sustainable platform, blah, 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 helping weavers, all, you know, if you can imagine all kinds of claims. Um, and I have observed, I've dug deeper to really figure out, is that true? You know, gone, gone, you know, gone as much into research. Uh, sadly, not the case. All of these, for the vast, vast majority, are absolutely false claims. This is just a word, as I said, it's just something that you can sound trendy and cool that I'm sustainable or I'm a sustainability brand. Um, and I have yet to come across, um, Again, in this field, you know, keeping it in like the textile arena, um, any technical experts in India that know about sustainability truly, and I can say this very confidently, because you know, again, back in the day uh, when I started uh, my work on environmental sustainability, 
I have not only trained the Indian, you know, the my Indian counterparts, I helped set up the certification standards and environmental sustainability standards within India. I have done that not just in India, you know, I worked with other countries and not only worked with them, but I directed their efforts around this, you know, countries like Canada, Italy, uh, just to name a few. So I have been there, done that. I have trained the people who are actually doing these things now, and this was more from the building sector, uh, but I have yet to come across one individual in India who is an actual expert in sustainability and handlooms or sustainability and fashion, sustainability and textiles. Uh, they just talk about, oh, let's just recycle and I'm a sustainability thought leader. And I came to a point where when you approached me for this conversation, you know, I think there was a part of me that was really waiting, you know, to, to come out with all of this. So thanks for giving me this opportunity because uh, I have a very strong feeling Debo, that after we do this, uh, that there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna probably do name calling or come after me saying that who is this person who's talking about all these things and we know better. Um, that's quite possible. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can Absolutely. just say, and I don't care. I honestly do not care. I know what I'm saying. I have my facts straight. And again, as I said, if you seek, if you want to get more information, information exists. If you want to continue being fooled, if you want to continue being stupid and innocent, your choice. Uh, but that's not what our conversation is about. Uh, so, you know, I will just say that I have yet to come across an expert in this field in India. It is just words and fluff with absolutely no um, technical background, no research. Forget about, you don't even need to have an academic background to do this. You could have just become an expert in this field by having uh, done uh, this work. Yeah. Just with the yeah. common sense, you can go absolutely. along. All right. Absolutely. So, so yeah, I have yet to come don't, across don't that. bother because uh, <laughs> I, 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 um, I have a statement a permanent statement in a in any area of india you may or may not get a medicine shop or a tea shop or a grocery shop but you surely get one handloom revivalist and one sustainability expert okay so <laughs> so it, it's whoever will talk about you okay let them talk yeah i don't yeah i don't care they're, they're making they're, they're, they're toasting their bread in this fire so and oh, and, yeah. they, sure, they, sure. and we will all burn into that fire that is the tension okay so <laughs> sonia so for today we are we are moving on i hope in coming days we will get the chance to get you and take some information knowledges and insights from you for today thanks for your time and thank i'm thanking from my heart for your time and what i can say more so thank you thank you thank you very much for this opportunity and i'm looking forward to you know continuing this i think this is just the beginning so again thanks for yes. getting this to start mm -hmm. um, and i'm really hoping that if people had the patience to watch this conversation and even get one thing meaningful out of this, uh, that will be you know, a good work for us. And uh, hope that breaking the bubble has started. And this is again, not just breaking the bubble. Uh, this is breaking the bubble with, myth, with facts. It's not just saying things. So uh, I'm just hoping that this is the beginning for more. Okay. We are committed to promote sustainability on Indian handloom or across the board. So we will get you again and we will we'll try to hold you for a longer period of time to get more and more from you for today. Goodbye for now and thank, thank you, Sonia. I'm thanking on behalf of all the viewer who is viewing. So thanking you again. Goodbye.